Hello everyone and welcome back to Smug and Play, uh, the YouTube channel that's all about late 90s, early 2000s PC gaming, technology, culture, uh, and something else. Um, and this is in the something else category, I believe. Uh, today we're talking about my, my one and only love, um, Fry's Electronics. I'm, uh, I'm still waiting for the Supreme Court to uh, allow me to legally marry Charlie Chip, the uh, mascot of Fry's. So don't, don't stand the way of love, Justice Roberts. Um, if you don't know what Fry's Electronics is because they don't have a store in your area, I, I just want to give like a quick overview that will kind of explain this. But uh, Fry's Electronics is uh, an electronics retailer that has these gigantic stores throughout California and some other parts of the U.S. Like uh, I think Arizona has got one, and I think there's one. Yeah, in but most most of their stores are in California and Texas, and kind of a smattering kind of of adjacent states. But yeah, yeah they're concentrated sort of in the west and the south. So if you're from the northeast or whatever, you probably you're probably heard. shrugging your shoulders and wondering. But you see, Fry's Electronics was this, this incredible crossroads of nerd culture. Um, you didn't know who you'd run into in a prize electronics. Uh, John Louis Gasset, the founder of B uh, and, and a former Apple executive, actually worked as a cashier at Fry's after he was really? like, yeah, he wrote a post about it when they, when he heard about the Palo Alto store closing, he wrote a post about how he worked as a cashier at the Sunnyvale Fry's after he got kicked out of Apple. Um, and so, I mean, it's, it's, it was like a date spot for nerds. Like everyone went to Fry's um, and it was just row after row after row of uh, electronics, merchandise, car audio, televisions, you know, washing machines, and of course, uh, computers and computer components. Um, and each but they were the also known for their beautiful uh, facades or yes. not even that. Yeah. Themes. Yeah, so they're the, all themed. Yeah, so every store has a theme. The one you're seeing is the Burbank store, which kind of has this like 1950s sci fi slash monster movie aesthetic. Um, it has this, you know, like spaceship that's crashed into the front of it. So if you look at some, some other, uh, some other classic fries here, uh, there's one that has like a megalithic theme that's in Arizona. I was going to say it's like a Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yeah, thing. it's more like sort of a early mock, 90s Nickelodeon uh, early show. Early 90s Nickelodeon mock megalithic. Uh, it's not, I think it's not very respectful culturally. It's just sort of interesting uh, aesthetically. Um, yeah. So the inside the Burbank one, they also have uh, like this giant kraken like creature bursting through the wall. Um, well, it's, how do you define a kraken? I thought this was like some alien octopus thing. It's but... some sort of, yeah, some sort of Lovecraftian horror. I the, don't know. It's, ah, yeah, the kraken. Yeah, basically. It's it's the kraken. The teeth on it don't make a lot of sense if you know cephalopods, because I think they have beaks, don't they? So um, that's confusing. But, you know, what this is really about is, is what you can see here in this slide. This is sort of a picture of what the interior of you know a fries you know looks like in the in the early 2000s you have this wall full of motherboards you've got pc components here you got cases you've got ram uh During the golden age of fries the golden you know it might not look fries. like this right now yeah fries fries has gone through some tough times in the past that we'll talk about as well as right now um during their conversion from like their, their usual model to like a, uh, a consignment based model, all of the store shelves were empty in fries throughout like 2019. And it's only just now that they were starting to restock it, but then COVID hit hit and then there's <laughs> no one who's going to the stores anymore. Um, so fries faces a number of challenges, but you know, in the late nineties and early two thousands, this was, this was a Mecca for people who are into computing. Um, and I wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about what was going on sort of on the business side because it plays into what we're discussing today. Well, well, well before we do that, okay. I think we're gonna say a lot of negative, fair but negative things about Fry's. I, I wanna just chip in there that like, they had a unique retail experience uh, yeah. going for them. You could actually, build a computer based on the parts that you bought at Fry's, uh, which I couldn't really say that for like CompUSA 
uh, you know, CompuSC would you go in there, they might have two CPUs. Usually they had like one motherboard manufacturer and then there's a lot of missing parts you, you really couldn't get. And, you know, I'm happy Fry's had all this inventory. You know, I, I think they, they could have made more money doing anything else. I feel like the TV department probably made more in a week than the yeah. the, the like motherboard department made in a year. <laughs> in 10,000 years. <laughs> I mean, there were a lot of problems there, but I mean, what you're saying is true. I mean, what was great about Fry's is you could show up with an idea of, I want to build a computer that's got this processor and this motherboard and this graphics card, and you could come home with all those parts uh, and, and have your pick of cases and fans and everything. Um, because they really, they had, they had it all, everything down to the last screw was somewhere on some shelf and you would have some extremely eager salesperson basically, uh, hunting you to the ends of the earth and, and taking you from section to section because everything, absolutely everyone was on commission. It's entirely commission based. So. You know, Even the cashier at the end, which doesn't make much sense. I know. So like uh, every everyone was hungry. So if you if right. you showed up and you know wanted to buy a motherboard, it's like oh you want a case? Oh you want a new car stereo? Or you want a pair of socks? I'll go walk you down to the clothing department. You know it's it was quite quite the experience. Um, so yeah, I want I want to talk about why what what. One of the things that was going wrong behind the scenes at Fry's, because it, it's going to explain what we're talking about next, which is Fry's incredible budget CPU motherboard combos that they ran in the early 2000s. Um, so the vice president of Fry's, uh, of, of their merchandising department, was this man named uh, Alsaf Umar Siddiqui. Uh, and he had been hired by the Fry's brothers early on and sort of groomed uh, for an executive role. And he convinced the people at Fry's that he should personally be allowed to do all of the uh, negotiations with vendors. And so it turned out that um, uh, Umar, Omar, he was, he was called, or as he was called uh, on the Vegas Strip, Mr. S, uh, had a bit of a gambling problem. Um, and by a bit of a gambling problem, I mean that he spent $162 million at the MGM Grand. <laughs> um, and was basically uh, shaking down vendors and, and, and creating incredible commissions and kickbacks for himself personally so that he could pay off his ridiculous multi-million dollar gambling debts uh, in Vegas. They would actually charter planes, like the, the casinos would charter planes to fly him out to Vegas and basically uh, just nurse his gambling addiction any way they could. They, he liked Dom Perignon Rosé. He liked uh, those Fiji water bottles in sets of three. He liked lint-free towels. And the casinos made sure that everything was set up for Mr. S so that he could just hit the blackjack tables and, and drop millions of, of dollars. Um, I'm happy that all of our dollars spent at Fry's wound up at the casinos. Yeah. Well, so here's, here's what happened, though. I mean, no, because they were losing money. What happened was... Um, in order for in order for uh, Omar to land these deals, uh, you know, he would say, "Okay, if if we buy this many motherboards at this price," and he would they would order they make a huge order, much bigger than Fry's actually needed. But if we do a big order like this, uh, you know, I'll, I can get this much of a commission from it. So he would he would put through orders. Uh, not just at prices that were higher than Fry's should have been paying, but like quantities that were much larger than Fry's should have been receiving so that he could get the big kickbacks and commissions. And uh, as a result, Fry's was always filled to the brim with ECS motherboards. And the retail people were constantly trying to, uh, to basically blow them out, to, to find ways to, yeah. to clear them out of the store. I mean um, I would say more broadly that the, the supply and the demand never seemed matched at Fry's Electronics. Did not match at all. Yes. Uh, I mean, and it was very evident, I agree, in the motherboard department, but also in like power supplies and cases, yes. for example. Yeah. Um, a common occurrence for me would be like, you know, I built a new rig and the power supply either like wasn't spec high enough or blew up, you know, when I plugged everything in. And, and I was like, I need to get a power supply now. So I'll drive to Fry's and, you know, the cooler master, the high quality product you wanted, 
wasn't there. There was just one open box, which we can talk about <laughs> more on the shelf. Yeah. And then there would be, you know, probably a hundred of some brand I'd never heard of right. with, you know, right. no, no reason to trust them other than they had a hundred LEDs right. on the power. Supply, yeah. you know? so, I mean, Sprites was always filled to the brim, not with the stuff made by the, the manufacturers that enthusiasts were necessarily most excited about, but the ones that were the most unscrupulous and the most open to Mr. S's sort of overtures about high volume for high commissions. So as I said, there were stacks of things that they're constantly trying uh, to clearance out. And one of the ways that they did this was their weekly advertised CPU motherboard combos. Um, and so every week in, in local newspapers like the San Jose uh, Mercury News, Fries would run uh, a print ad and there would be in there some deal where you get this motherboard and you get this CPU for this incredible price. And very frequently, the cost of the combo would be less than the cost of the CPU alone. They were just trying to move yep. these motherboards. Something was clearly wrong. These things shouldn't be that cheap. There shouldn't be that many of any of these things here. Um, there was some, clearly something going on. But what was interesting is you remember one of the things that I... I dislike about the PC gaming scene in the late '90s and early 2000s is, you know, that it was uh, it was exclusive in many ways, you know, and, and part of that exclusivity or that lack of inclusivity uh, was was sort of the the racist and and sexist sort of nature or our culture of the games and 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 of technology, but also just the high cost. I mean, just a few years before, computers cost thousands of dollars. But, you know, suddenly these, these MOBO deals, these CPU MOBO deals were so cheap that you and I, as, you know, just teenagers could see one of these things in the paper and say, you know, that's like, that's two lawn mowings worth. And you can go down to Fry's, but on our bikes, we can get a CPU MOBO combo. We can scrounge a PSU from somewhere. We can scrounge... Uh, you know, RAM from somewhere and we could scrounge a video card from somewhere and then we could throw it all into a cardboard box, usually the box the motherboard came in, and you have a PC. So, you know, Fry's here, because of all of this sort of illegal shenanigans going on in the background, is actually making the world of enthusiast computing so much more accessible uh, that you and I as teenagers are are taking part. So I, I, I mean, applaud Fry's. I, I really wasn't going to go that far. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> you're, I mean, you're right. We, when we bought these, we were students. We were short on cash, and uh, being able to get a, a motherboard essentially for free to get you started was good. You know, I, I think, and for all the combos I bought, I eventually, when I had more cash, ordered a nice motherboard off of Newegg. Yeah. But this got you started, and you know, lasts you a few months, and uh, that's all you really needed. That's all I expected out of the deal, I guess. I yeah. Say. You got your feet wet. You got to learn what it's like to put together a computer. And if things went well, you might be playing Counter Strike with your friends yeah. that night. You know, like that's that was the the wonder, the like the dream of Fry's um, yeah. for me in the in the early aughts specifically. Um, so yeah. what we want to do now is I want to show you some classic CPU motherboard deals that Fry's advertised back in the day, and then give a quick rating. <laughs> and just and kind of discuss them. So Black Ooh. Friday, two thousand four. We had two options here as well, right? One point six gigahertz AMD Duron. Yeah, yeah. But look, at, look at the red PCB, Ost. What does the red PCB tell you? Uh, BioStar or MSI? Nope. No. This is a PC chips M eight eleven. I should have known from the heatsink. See the resolution so yeah, low. yeah. No, no, no. So PC this was C chips. Oh, you ruined this. Is a this great me. example, Austin, because uh, until about '05 or something, they didn't tell you what motherboard it was, and and we would scrutinize. You know, you would get your right exactly. your uh, magnifying glass out to look what motherboard what could is this it? be. Does it say Asus? Please let it say Asus. I like how you thought it was a Biostar. Oh, yeah. it was red. Biostar so had a lot of red Thea boards. You should this. explain. The PC Chips is a subsidiary of ECS that makes the worst <laughs> crap ever. <laughs> it's like the it's like the bargain arm of it's the Asrock of of ECS, which yeah, it's 
I mean, there's some other problems here. It's a, it's not a retail CPU combo. It is a bare CPU, which, hey, as we all know, socket A uh, chips don't need any it's cooling. I mean, <laughs> well, anyway, uh, so you should rethink your, your rating and, and give it to me. I, uh, okay. We'll I mean, here, all here. you're writing, I'll explain that this Duron is an apple bread. Yeah. Um, so it's a it's a thoroughbred with a quarter of the L2 cache and uh, that, yeah that that's yeah. that's what got me. And, okay so and, I, you know I'm gonna go to four I mean oh. I originally two is what I put okay but I have an explanation okay what's your two and I'll explain my four well okay the redeeming factor is it's cheap right you know I yeah mean, this is the you dream argue, three nine 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 right the dream and the processor is fine I it's so, fine. It's, it's, with 64k of l2 it's fine it's cheap it's cheap here's, but like here's my problem so actually i think my rating depends on exactly what you do when you purchase this so <laughs> here's my thought have you this pc chips mobo yeah if you actually use it it will probably set fire to your house right Possibly. so the fact that this was a 40 dollar combo especially whatever, that's if not you don't remember to pick up a heat sink because it doesn't come with one of those right even if you never boot it up, never apply power to this motherboard, yeah. there's some sort of curse. Have you seen the Final Destination movies? Yeah, I where know like, what you're talking about. Just like, there's a force that causes people to die. Like, you'll either get cancer or right. something terrible will happen to you because it's if, chips. if you take this motherboard home. But then yeah. again, if you were to take this combo and on the way out of fries, throw the PC chips motherboard in the trash. I don't know, it depends on what kind of curse it is. But if you did that, maybe it would be like a four. You know, I, I would give it to you. But then you're paying 40 bucks for an apple bread Duron. It's like, it's funny. This is the last Duron of this generation. Yeah. And it's like, Simprons don't, like, Duron was a great name in like in the Thunderbird era when you have like 700 megahertz T Bird, you could pick up a Duron for way cheap and it wouldn't be too far off in gaming. But like at this by then, you know, you've got Athlon, Sim, you got Athlon XP, Simpron, and Duron. And Duron is just so far below. And like the highest end Duron seems like a really odd thing. I originally I was going to rate this up when i still thought that it was like a uh biostar or msi motherboard before you said pc chips and i had a heart attack i was going to say look you get a cpu right you can and it's it's socket a so you can take you can find an old thrown out socket 7 system throw the heat sink from that on there it'll work right and then you've got lan you've got usb of some sort and you have audio audio you may have these things. You may have these things. You're RAM and a graphics card away from being able to play some of the most fantastic PC games of the era to some extent. And it's only and it's only forty bucks. Like forty bucks. I, I, actually, I actually think we're in total agreement. Like without yeah. the superstition, I would give it a four, but there's the curse element brings it to a two. Ah, but again, it's a two it. because it's cheap. I mean, what can you do? Okay. All right. Now let's move on to the second deal here. Three gigahertz Intel Pentium Four processor with motherboard again motherboard. With, with, a, with a Via PT eight hundred. Right. Like okay. All right. It's it's an eight hundred. It's a four hundred DDR FSB motherboard. It's give me a give me a number. Well, so so the problem for me here, you know, is. It's already out of the price range a bit. I mean, that's let's, that's let's, the real problem here. I mean, this is this is a this is a two. I mean, oh, I just I just gave it a zero. I mean, I one hundred fifty nine ninety nine. You think I'm made out of money, Omar? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like the Pentium three is like already met, and then and then that in this Pentium era 4, there were there were so many cheap motherboards with legitimate Intel chipsets. And I just don't think the Via PT-800 is the right it's chipset. Worth it. I mean, you can, like an 845, so, an 845 board uh, paired would be fine too, right? Yeah. You don't need... It just feels like you're taking unnecessary risk. I mean... Well, you get, then, you get the 800 megahertz. I mean, it's 400 megahertz DDR-FSB. Like that's... 
you're getting that um, for for fairly cheap. But like that that's that's all that can be said. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Cool. All right. All right. I think this was from 2005. Um, AMD Simfron 2800 plus ECS Enforce 3A uh, 6999. Uh, it's Enforce 3 250. I think that's that's not the worst one. That's not the one that was really horrible that they led with. Uh, the Enforce 3 is only differed in like the. Um like how much pumped the hypertransport was. So it's yeah. not a big difference anyway. Well, the 250, so, I think, has full the full hypertransport well, speed. No, the this. 250 has 800 effective, and the Ultra had 1,000 effective. Oh, but anyway, okay. it doesn't matter. I mean, you, there was no graphics card or anything that was that great that would somehow saturate that. Anyway, a uh, number. A number? You know, I, I, I'm happy to give this a 7. What? At least. I, I gave this a 10 out of... Is this 10 out of 10 for you? 10 out, now, well, you now you I bought are, this one. So you I, have, think you bought it. I knew it. I, bought I thought I found the one you bought. So let me tell you, Austin. Okay, so I think a very that. important factor. One is this ECS motherboard also was stable. Yeah. Enforce 3 was a little bit better than the other Enforces. Uh, Only better than the original 2 um, and 4. A, a, a big, big plus for this bundle is the overclocking headroom. So, you know, the Athlon 64, and this is probably a 90 nanometer, I'm not sure, but anyway, it, Athlon 64 went up to like 2.6 or 2.8 gigahertz. This processor is a 1.6, and you can definitely overclock it. So even on this uh, ECS, you could do a 25% FSB overclock, which I did, and it brings it up to a 2 gigahertz. Hmm. Uh, AMD F, you know, it's wow. essentially an 64. So, and that was just the ECS could only go up to that. Like the, the chipset has more headroom, but the BIOS, unfortunately, doesn't let you. It doesn't go let anywhere. you. Well, that's, that's where hacked BIOSes kind of came in. You know, a lot of these Fry's Mobo deals, people would post hacked BIOSes that would have yeah. greater overclocking options. They would, they would develop, <laughs> Fry's bought so many of them, they could actually develop a little community around some of these boards. I don't well, know I if this was one of them, but some of them were, some of the, some of the Socket A um, via stuff was. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, mean that, that was, so obviously I love this combo, but I will just complete that thought that uh, like, obviously the issue with ECS, there was a possible workmanship issue, but definitely the BIOS was always sort of the, the make or break for you, you know? It, right. It might just not work and there's no BIOS update to fix it for you. And so you would have to, return your bundle or get a new motherboard or whatever. Um, and, and that was sort of the biggest problem with ECS. Yeah, they just didn't care really about the BIOS yeah. or I the remember. software. Don't put the driver CD in your CD drive either. You know, like there's definitely <laughs> mount. Just Yeah. You if know, you was, knew what you were doing, it was all it was, right. It was funny back in the day, like if you bought an ECS Movo combo from Fry's and it worked fine and you saw those big stacks of returns the next week, you're like, well, it was so cheap that people who didn't really know how to put together PCs bought them, and like that's why they got returned. It's not like there's anything fundamentally wrong with these motherboards, but <laughs> if you were one of the people who bought like three of them and none of them worked, then like rumors started to spread that maybe they had like factory seconds, or maybe they were reselling previously returned items. Um, I've certainly heard scurrilous rumors and accusations, but um, I don't know how substantiated those things were. Fries, anything returned went immediately back to the shelf. <laughs> if, it, uh, if it had at least two out of the three things that were supposed to be in the box, it immediately was returned to the shelf. Uh, <laughs> even if the box wasn't even remotely intact, they just sort of... Uh, you know, uh, cellophane it together, or That's whatever. Right. Um, Duct tape. <laughs> and uh, they didn't give you much of a discount to make it worth your while. And that that was a big no. problem at Fry's. You would you would look for that creative sound blaster or or power supply you wanted, and uh, there would just be one left in right. some sort of crumpled state <laughs> with, with like a, a with a like cockeyed cockeyed like return merchandise sticker on it and like half the cords coming out of it like an octopus in a box and it would be like oh and then there'd be like ten thousand of some like great quality brand to the left 
and you'd be like, Did you know that quality is is a is a private label for ECS? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. AMD Phenom Quad Core 9850 Black Edition. Black Edition. That's what they used to call their unlocked ones, right? And in ECS, of course, GeForce 750M M2 version 2. This is the GeForce 7050 630A chipset. We've got DDR2 800, SATA 2, and RAID. Uh, and a PCIe upgrade slot, which means that I, I, I like how they called that out for both motherboards. Yeah, here. They, they're starting to get get an idea of what people might actually want, as opposed to just what they want, which is to get rid of. These. Yeah, I mean, we don't we don't even need to talk about about this first one here because again, oh yeah, yeah sorry. Omar, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even rate it. It was too expensive. Omar I mean, made this out of my two forty nine Omar. What do you think I'm reading these things for? Um, so let's just skip that. Okay, Athlon yeah. X2, Athlon 64 X2, 5600 plus, and ECS GeForce 6100 PM. It's, uh, it's actually it's actually in Force 4, just with an integrated graphics. Right. So, so in Force you might 4 have to was... adjust. I know you don't have good feelings about in Force 4, although you just put together an in Force 4. But... Yeah, as you pointed out, um, despite the fact that I say terrible things about NVIDIA chipsets all the time, the only computer that I assembled last week that actually worked was an Enforce 4 SLI yeah. board. Yeah, causing so, me to eat yeah. words. Um, right, so, and it has an integrated GeForce 6100 graphics so that you can play Doom 3 <laughs> at 20 frames per second at 800 by 600. So that's going to be good. I mean, I wouldn't recommend that exactly, but anyway, it's a motherboard. It's a motherboard. You know, I, it's, it, this is a, I'm going to go fiber. I'm going fiber on this. Oh, really? I gave this an eight out of 10. Oh, you gave it an so, eight? Okay. So, tell, tell sir, for eight. one thing, I love how Fry's tells you, you saved $95. I mean, that's very motivating right there. Uh, I mean, you that know. is true. <laughs> I, presumably I mean, the list price of the motherboard was like probably the $95, but. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I, I, part of this was I, I looked into the processor and it seemed like a pretty good, uh, yeah, buy for a hundred bucks. 600 plus is um, a, is a very good dual core processor. That's yeah. fairly competitive this time. And yeah. So it seemed like, oh, you're getting a lot of CPU for a hundred bucks. And something to put it in that has six channel audio and LAN and a PCIe upgrade slot, as opposed to motherboards of this era that they didn't solder the PCIe slot so into. Why did you only give it a five? Yeah. Why did you give it only five? You know, it, it's it's mostly like. A hundred, a hundred is the top end of what I would possibly pay for a Fry's ECS motherboard combo, right? You know, uh, and so I have to think about how I'm going to feel about this deal once I plug it in and the motherboard doesn't post. How am I going to feel about having gotten uh, Athlon sixty four X two fifty six hundred plus for a hundred bucks? And the answer to that is, like, I'm going to feel I, I'm. I don't know if I'm going to feel great about it, having to then go and then buy an ASUS board or something, which is naturally what would happen uh, if the if the board didn't work out or something something happened, or have to go through returns or whatever like that. It's not for me. The thrill is when it's thirty nine ninety nine. It's okay, and if it works, you'll be like, boom, thirty nine ninety nine. I have a computer. For this, it's like a hundred a hundred bucks. I'm, I'm thinking about the potential downsides here. I think that if if I didn't look into this particular ECS board. If this one was okay, then this could be a solid foundation to like a mid-range machine. And I would, I would, if I had a plan and I had a two hundred dollar budget, and I was, I was going to pick up discrete graphics, and I was going to, you know, ha and I had the RAM on hand, then I might do this. I might see it as more of a seven. But you know, without a plan in mind, is this going to get me on my bike to go to Fry's and, and buy this thing? Mm. Oh, probably not. It's not bad, but it's probably not. I see. It's not. You're, it's not a door buster. You're you're a very I'm door, a door buster. buster. So, <laughs> okay, going a little bit more into the future here. I, I like I like this one because it's very clear now. They just want to get rid of this specific motherboard. You know, it's like <laughs> we really 
right. really need to throw away as much stock as we can. Right. It's like, okay, we've got a lot of these ECS 945 GCT things. Uh, we need to get yeah. rid of them. So yeah, we'll, I did want to talk. Can I actually talk about the like the pricier one first? On sure. This one? Let's do that. I have some concerns, right? So tell me about them. Well, the 945 GC chipset is not the right one for this. So this processor is actually like a 1333 FSB, and um, the 945 GC actually doesn't support 1333 FSB. Like it's some sort of overclocking. Yeah, I was about to say, and the 945, I'm pretty sure it doesn't support yeah. that. Oh. And even if it, even if you do do that, it like doesn't support like DDR2 800. So like it's like not no, a good it memory. It, you, need, you need a 965 to support DDR2 800. Yeah, so it just it. I mean, even the just, 965 doesn't support officially support a 133 megahertz FSB. You know, you yeah. need the you need the next generation uh, of 775 boards to do that. And yeah, so yeah, it's interesting because here's here's an OC ECS board. Like, what? How much? <laughs> how likely do you think it is? You're going to yeah. take this thing home and it's going to, with a 945 chipset, run stably at 133 megahertz FSB to support this processor. That seems not at all likely to me. It's a really bad pairing. It's like, it's like Pinot Noir with Taco Bell or something. You know, yeah, it's like... this is, this, this, this gets the, the coveted zero. Like, come on, this is, this is, it's not going to work. You know, it's, it's. How is this going to work? It's not. This is not going yeah. to work. You're going to take... There's no way this is going to work. All that said, I did look up this motherboard, and uh, it was used a lot in Hackintoshes because 945 oh, right. is the chipset of the uh, the first Intel Max. Yeah. Uh, so if you could live with, like, the integrated graphics, it would it would sort of run Mac OS. Yeah, that would be interesting. I didn't think of it from that angle. as a first yeah. Hackintosh bundle deal. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, sure, but this is also <laughs> this would be like early. This is early days Hackintosh. You know, this yeah, is like oh, you're going to be running like Snow early. Leopard, maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe not. Maybe maybe earlier. So. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm willing to consider the E4500 deal here. So. Yeah. You, you should give a number. Give me a number. You know, I give. I would go. What are we gonna do? I. I the 4500 doesn't blow i mean this is a two for me you know the 4500 yeah. doesn't blow me away um as a, yeah. as a core two duo as core two duos go it's not it's not very impressive and again you're yeah. getting this oddball like pseudo enthusiast <laughs> board a 945 with an fsb the 945 should not be running no um, so i gave it a a Four. I'm not exactly sure why, why yet. Um, I, it's definitely worse than the X two fifty six hundred deal. I yeah. actually, so I looked at them because uh, actually, the, the, if you look at the the item numbers on this, they're pretty close to last to the last uh, slide. Yeah. So I figured it's about the same time. And the X two fifty six hundred is faster. I looked at benchmarks, so they're about the same price. The six the, the Athlon's better. So. Um, so that's why I gave it a lower score. I don't. I guess the reason I went up to four is maybe it's good at overclocking, like the processor, I, I, the motherboard. I <laughs> uh, but, ECS boards aren't thought, good at clocking, much less <laughs> overclocking. I just thought because it's a low spec Conroe, maybe you could overclock it to a high spec. But again, I don't really know. So anyway, yeah, it's low. I don't, I don't know how well OCing went on this Conroes. Shall we move on to the last one? The I'm last excited, one. I'm excited yeah. about this. Sure. Okay, this one's There's a higher a lot of resolution. Numbers in this ad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all these are relevant to the consumer. All these numbers: <laughs> AMD Athlon Two X Two, Two Hundred and Forty, and MSI K Nine N Six PGM V Two, with an NVIDIA MCP Sixty One P, also known as the Sixty One and Fifty SE uh, chipset. Um, very closely related to one that we saw earlier. We got DDR2. I think this is a this is a uh, M2 board. Is that right? This is uh, AM2 plus. It, I think. I, oh, AM2 plus. Okay. I think. 
But I don't know. You know, this reminds me of like, oh, I need to get a Subaru WRX STI S209. And, you know. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, so so for me, uh, here, here's, yeah. let's, let's talk. Let's talk. Okay, I'm going to get my, I'm going back to my numbers here. This for me, baby. This is this is the dream. Oh, oh, oh. So, uh, okay, so I gave it an eight. Of ten. Gave it an eight. I gave okay. it an eight. If Austin, if if that ten dollars off were instant savings, I would go for ten out of ten. Okay. But again, there's the rebate. Like it's not even worth the time, really, at yeah. that level. Well, it's, um, you know, like like Mr. S, I'm a gambling man, and ten dollars stakes, I'm willing to accept. Now, if this was. <laughs> Thirty nine ninety nine after a hundred dollar mail in rebate, and I'm just forget about it. Are you kidding me? That's never happening. You know, ten dollar no. mail in rebate. If it doesn't happen, I still got it for forty nine ninety nine in store. If the ten dollars comes, great. I got thirty nine ninety nine. I feel like a hero. I mean, but we've got we have a we have a brand name here that is not ECS. It's not the best brand name in the world, but it's, a, I, I it's really not PC think it's chips. A marginal difference, if anything, over ECS at this point. Just like you know, all motherboards were kind of congealing to the same level of crap. But but you know, if that's what it takes to get you to put your money down, you know, that's 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 great. Office. I mean, I see I see SATA with RAID support. That's an enthusiast feature, right? <laughs> I've got AM2 Plus. You know, there's some possibilities there. We've got, I think the 6150 SE still has integrated graphics, right? Yeah, so, this is in Force 4 with integrated graphics. So I've got... So you I, don't even need a graphics you card. You don't I even need, need a graphics card. 40 bucks in, there and you, you go. And you 8-channel audio, right? So you've got beyond surround sound. You know, this is, this is like IMAX level here. This is the dream. You know, you, you get on your bike. I see this and I get on my bike. I'm going to have a dual core... I'm going to have, you know, DDR2800 support. I've got integrated graphics. I don't need to buy a graphics card. I don't need to buy a sound card. All I got to do is find something that can power this and a little bit of RAM. And I am off to the races and I'll just copy. I'll go over to my friend's house and I'll write down the, the you know, a Windows XP um, serial number that his OEM taped to the side of the case. And then I'll I'll torrent the disc and I'll install it, and I will be playing Half Life Two tonight. That's what I think of when I see this. So that's why it's ten out of ten. This is this is a Fry's this is a dream of of personal computing enabled by Fry's uh, Mobo CPU combo deals. One day only, man. Get on that bike. It should just say get on the bike. One day only. Get we know that. You know that you're not driving if you're buying this one. <laughs> Just run. <laughs> Don't walk. Run. Run to your nearest fries. This is going to be flying off the shelves. In fact, it doesn't say ECS. Um, it's got a lot of numbers. And yeah, we're, this, is, this is it. This is it for me. Um, do we have anything else we wanted to say? Uh, if you want to learn more about late 90s, early aughts, Computers, games, and, technology, you know, culture. About our new slideshow uh, format. I think, yeah, this you is know. our new. We're trying, <laughs> in response to our slow growth in followers uh, and subscribers, we're trying even less. Uh, we're still going to be <laughs> doing builds. the The algorithm has decided that the only things that people care about are Pentium threes and uh, Pentium the, IIIs. Actually, Pentium IIIs. Those are what people like. So I I got some more Pentium III stuff for you. <laughs> 